Who doesn't love a vacation? They can be great. But you know, sometimes the getting ready for a vacation, keeping up with all the fun on a vacation, well, gosh, you get home and you need a vacation from your vacation. Traveling around the world can be, well, a lot of fun, but it can also be exhausting. So today I thought we might talk about the easiest of vacations, the staycation. So you might ask, what is a staycation? Well, it's this right here. It's taking a vacation frame of mind and applying it to home. When I go on vacation, I love to eat good food. It's just part of being on vacation, you know? And when you can enjoy it with friends and you can go to unique places, well, every night feels like a celebration, right? So you might ask, why reserve those kinds of events to just vacations only? Why not do it more often at home, have your friends over, and make it a little more exotic and a little more fun than, say, just an evening with friends? For this particular fun party favor, I brought in my friend and flower expert, Jay Schwanke. Jay, I love how creative you are with flowers. Well, thank you. You know, one of the things that's become so popular is this idea of the flower crown. Right. There, there's so many wonderful ways to do this, and I love your technique because it's so simple, and I just thought it would be fun to, to show our friends how really simple it is and how you can really get the wow factor. You can, and I like a big chunky flower crown. I do too. I want yeah. there to be big flowers in it. Capital I want it. C crown. Yes, I want drapiness going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing that we start with is we start with a piece of aluminum wire. Right. And, any, and this is pretty heavy. I mean, it's, it's thick. It's thick, but it's very pliable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Right, right. And so we've made a little hook at the end, and I just twist that off. Sure. And this is going to be what's going to attach around our head. So then we measure. Yeah. So it's sort of, there's the diameter of your head, but you've got a little bit left here. It looks like you have about, what, uh, five, six inches. There. Yeah, so I bend it where that's gonna be. Right. So then when we're finished, this goes through there. Right. And then that completes our ring. So that's sort of your hat band. Exactly, right. okay. and you can adjust it according to if you want it on, you know, if you wanna wear it back here, right. or if you want it to be more, more around forward. your head. Because mm -hmm. it's gonna get about an inch or an inch and a half bigger as we go all the way mm -hmm. around. I wondered about that because it does begin to take up a little bit of the diameter. And that's nice, because then it doesn't fall around or down the neck. <laughs> right. right, so yeah, it becomes it's all a, good. A floral necklace, right. Exactly, so then our next thing is we use this craft covered wire and it's called bind wire mm -hmm. but I love it because it's pliable yeah and it comes in several colors so then we simply start wrapping so you can see this is where that little loop is yeah my there little is. loop is down here at the end yep there it is and so we just lay our flowers onto that piece of wire so first steps would be to just lay that guy on there and wrap the craft wire around mm -hmm. the outside I start with a piece of greenery and I might add in a eucomus I might add in a, a gardenia mm. I might add in a gerbrando gerbra right so here you can see what's going on I mean you've got you started with a piece of aspidistra there and then there's that pittosporum but I can see you've worked in the clematis the roses there's that eucomus the pineapple lily which is so easy to grow in the garden and so many of these are our familiar garden flowers uh, this says garden party when you, have a, when you have a flower crown I yeah. had a friend the other day who told me she was just having a bad day and she decided she was going to go out in her garden and make a flower crown and so then she sent me pictures of her washing the dishes, her flower crown, <laughs> mowing the lawn with a flower right. crown, because it makes her feel she better. She looked like the goddess Flora. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. So this is one that you, you finished over here just a few minutes ago, which is just absolutely gorgeous. Right. And I'm going to, I have to put it on here just to see how it fits. I think it fits just right. I, do, I did perfect. You like it? Uh-huh. Is there any special technique that you've learned over the years to sort of finish it off? We, we see the tip that's so natural and feather-like. As we get to the end, we want to make sure that we trim these. Right. And if you'll remember, we would build this all the way to the end, but this is where the loop's going to go through that end. Sure, sure. But as we bring this down, we want to come to a diminishing point. Yep, yep. And so you'll notice that as we get tighter down there. And if there's anything, if you want to go back up, you can go back up yeah. and catch again. Right, if you and wanted to add a few more, yeah. fill them in. Yep. The thing I've noticed is when someone makes a flower crown and they put it on, 
there's this smile that beams <laughs> over their face. You feel great when you're I've wearing I've been beaming flowers. ever since I had my own, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Perfect. It's perfect. Jay, these are great. Thank, well, thank you so you. much for sharing your creativity with us. Hey, if you want to create an atmospheric mood for an outdoor party and you want to keep mosquitoes away, you can do that by simply creating your own tiki torches using bottles that you might otherwise discard. What I'm doing is I'm adding some gravel in the bottom of it. One, it gives a little weight and stability. And hey, it looks good, but you can use marbles, anything you can get in there that's a solid object that you think would be attractive. Now, the next thing you want to do is think about the wick itself. You can buy these wicks, and there are a number of ways to um, actually attach them and thread them through the top. The bottle cap serves as a great way to keep the wick in place. Another way to go about it is to take a washer. In this case, I use a 7 8 washer and then a quarter inch washer here at the top. Whatever bottle size you have, you can find washers that will allow you to accommodate the wick into it. Next, all you do is pour in the citronella oil. A funnel comes in very handy. So just take your time pouring. Stick the wick in the bottle, and I'll just screw the slid down like that. You can see the wick is held tightly by the cap. We just need to allow some time for the wick to actually draw the oil up through the wick up here to the top so we can light it and we'll have a flame. See, it only takes a few minutes, and you can light it and you have a beautiful object and a useful object to adorn your garden with for an evening party. Ah, I just love a soothing cup of herbal tea out in my garden, particularly when I've grown some of the herbs myself. They're so easy to grow. Whether you grow them in containers or raised beds, they're really useful to have around. And there's so many aromatic and flavorful varieties to choose from. For a refreshing and uplifting flavor, go with a mint, like peppermint or spearmint. Why not try a mint with a twist, like chocolate or sweet mint? Another great attribute about mint is that this plant is good for soothing an upset tummy. If you're looking for a citrus flavor without growing your own fruit tree, give lemon thyme or lemon verbena a try. Both brighten and complement many other flavors. For instance, check out my pot of lemongrass. Makes quite a dramatic statement in the middle of this herb garden, don't you think? And you just tear off a leaf, bruise it, and what a lemony flavor, so refreshing. For calming aromatic teas that help reduce stress and help us relax, you might want to give lavender or rosemary a try. And stevia works great as a natural sweetener. Now that we've gotten past the scratch and sniff part of the program, and I've got your mouth watering for some of these delicious herbs, how about a few tips that will help you grow quite successfully your own herbal tea garden? First, I suggest siting your tea garden close to your kitchen, either in containers, raised beds, or in the ground, so you can harvest your herbs while the water boils. Also, have a planting plan. You see, knowing what plants you want and the dimensions of your space can save you a lot of time and resources at the garden center. If you've ever grown mint, you know it can grow like house of fire, and this plant is known for being a bit of a thug. So one of the ways to keep it from spreading and taking over your garden is to actually plant it in a container and then plant that container in your garden bed. This will keep the roots contained and then of course you're going to clip around the edges and use all of those leaves and stems in a beautiful, delicious herbal tea. When it comes time to brew your tea, you can either use dried or fresh herbs depending on the season or flavor preference. Dried herbs will last longer and are a little more potent while fresh herbs generally taste more vibrant and, well, fresh. If you prefer dried herbs, an easy way to do it yourself is just to bundle your harvest on the stem with twine and hang it upside down to dry out of direct sunlight. The amounts you use of each herb depend on how strong you want your tea. If using crushed dried herbs, start with a teaspoon per cup of hot water. If you're using fresh herbs, triple that amount. The real key to brewing the perfect cup of tea is water temperature and infusion time. The general rule of thumb on water temperature is the darker the color of the leaf of your herb, the hotter the water. Start with your temperature around 200 degrees and steep it for four to five minutes. 
Depending on your herbs, you may need to adjust. Just experiment to find interesting and tasty combinations that suit your palate. You know, a wise man once said that there's something about the nature of tea that leads us into a world of quiet contemplation about life. I think he may have something there. You know, growing a few herbs is really easy. So plant some and enjoy the bounty they provide. Tell me if this sounds familiar to you. You wake up one morning after a lovely evening dining with friends and you find yourself with one or two unfinished bottles of wine on your hands. Well, you hate to throw them away, but you won't be able to finish them before they turn to vinegar. So what do you do? I have an idea you might want to try. It's that time of year when 
Well, it's time to get this room really comfortable and ready to use. This is the sleeping porch, which is a very old fashioned idea. And you see this idea in certain parts of the country where, well, the summers were hot. So it's a very much a Southern idea. You also see it on the East Coast and the West Coast where you have really mild temperatures in the summer. And on the West Coast, you have mild temperatures in Southern California all the time. But the sleeping porch was used as a place to get away from the heat of the inside of the house and be able to take advantage of the breezes during the spring and the summer. And this room is really not quite as large as it might look. You see, it's only 12 feet wide and it's about 36 feet long. And so it really feels generous. And the idea about this room is for it to feel really comfy. And, uh, but what I wanna do is just describe first some of the architectural details. The floor is made of tongue and groove pine that's been painted sort of a soft green. From the floor, if you look straight up, it's a beadboard ceiling that's been painted a bird egg blue, and that's to keep insects from building nests on it like wasps and dirt daubers. Now, if you look at the north wall across here, you actually see the exterior finish of the house which is an old brick that's been lime washed. And then I have dark green shutters flanking the windows and the door down here on the west end. Now on both ends of this porch, since the prevailing winds come down the river in this direction, this entire wall, the west wall and the east wall are shuttered. And those are louvered shutters so you can close them up if there's too much wind coming this way or you can open them up if the breeze is just the way you want it. Speaking of breeze, Looking back at the ceiling, you can see I have three ceiling fans that can really stir it up, which makes it, again, a very comfortable space. Of course, the best view from the house is right up here. It's like a crow's nest, and you can see the world. You can see all the way down the river, and you can see it through this screen wire. And this is copper wire. And what I like about it is that it doesn't have an iridescence or a sheen and you can see right through it, it feels much more translucent to the eye, so uh, it doesn't distort what you see beyond. And I love being able to sit up here and watch barges go down the river and also be able to look at the garden and listen to the fountain below. You know, this room really reflects, I think, the whole garden home idea where you blur the lines between inside and out. Take, for instance, color, which is so important. There's some color echoes going on here. If we go back through the colors of the architecture of this outdoor room, you have the pale green floor, you have the white trim, you have the dark green with the shutters, and then you have the pale blue ceiling and the soft yellow walls. Well, I've echoed that in the furnishings that are out here. The side tables are dark green. Some of the rockers that are in wicker are done in pale green. And even the beds are done white with coverlets that are blue and the pillows are white, blue, and green. And hey, this stuff really lasts. This is indoor outdoor fabric. Looks like it would be something you would use inside the home. But this has been out here for three years and it has held up beautifully. And the rugs as well, they're indoor outdoor rugs. And I have all of the little comfort creatures around, a lamp, a lantern here with candles, house plants, and even magazines, as well as a tray of refreshments for my friends to drink. So even though it's called a sleeping porch, it doesn't mean you have to come out here and sleep. This little corner or nook is a perfect place to just sort of kick back and relax. And I cannot tell you how important house plants are, particularly in the summer, to make a place feel really cozy and wonderful. Plus, it does your house plants a lot of good to get them outside for what I call summer camp. Now come down here at the other end because I want to show you the aspect of this room that always grabs everyone's attention. This tub really is one of the most comforting aspects of this entire house, and particularly this room. You can fill it up with warm water, bubble bath, a little rubber ducky, have a glass of wine, and just kick back and watch the world go by. What I do is keep a bath mat out here. This old step ladder serves as a great place to put extra towels and soap and shampoo and so forth. And on a practical note, the plumbing is actually, it's run under the floor and there's a shut off valve right behind this shutter where we can turn the water off in the winter so we don't get a problem with 
freezing pipes breaking and so forth. So if you do this and you have freezing temperatures in your part of the world, you want to make sure you have that little safety valve in place. Just look at these beautiful sunflowers. They're mood changers. They make me so happy just to be around them. This one's called Vincent Fresh. What I love about it is it has this beautiful ring of ray flowers, these yellow petals. And if you look in the center, well, the center's almost green. Look at that one, it has a little green eye in the middle, which I think adds a nice little design touch. We grew these Vincent Fresh right here at the farm, along with another Vincent sunflower I love equally well. It's a little more traditional in color. It's called Vincent Choice. It features the well-loved brown center that most of us are familiar with. Both of the Vincents are hardy, disease-resistant plants, and they have big, beautiful blooms that face up and out. Let me show you another quality of this sunflower, all of the Vincents that I really like, is this double row of petals that go around. Most sunflowers just have one row, which makes them, I think, even more visually compelling and robust. That's one pretty flower. I love having fresh flowers in the house, but, you know, they can get expensive. I've seen sunflowers priced anywhere from $40 to $80 a dozen, which is pretty expensive. So why not grow your own? And why stop at sunflowers? There are many different varieties of cut flowers to grow that include Seloisia, Ageratum, and Asters, just to name a few. And you can plant them just about anywhere, in containers, among your bedding plants and your flower beds, but obviously the way I like to grow them is in long rows in my vegetable garden. They're great for attracting pollinators and it's easy for me to snip a few when I'm out harvesting veggies. When you're arranging flowers, some of the basic rules are always use fresh water, recut the stems and always take the leaves off. You can see I pretty well stripped the leaves from these. You don't want leaves in the water. So what I'm doing is I'm just placing these sunflowers in, recutting the stems, I'm making sure that the blooms turn outward. All I need to do every day or so is check the water and make sure that it's fresh. What you wanna do is you wanna harvest early in the morning before it gets hot and the sun gets out on them. And you can see it really doesn't take long to put together an arrangement. I love these simple arrangements where I'm using just one variety. These would look great anywhere in the house, but I'm actually gonna put them out on the dining table on the screen porch. Give some of these Vincent sunflowers a try. You'll be glad you did. As you can see, bringing the vacation home really isn't all that difficult. It's a matter of just figuring out what's enjoyable and relaxing for you and just doing it. You see, I think it's all about taking the time to center yourself, whether it's an hour, a day, or if you're lucky enough to take a week off, do that. The main thing to remember is just do what makes you happy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no fingers, I don't know what to do with fingers. Love it. So many pollinators. I love that about your garden. Oh, thank you. We raise them. We eat them. <laughs> They're delicious. <laughs> have you ever eaten a butterfly? I have not. I do a great butterfly pate. You'll love it. <laughs>